So we're in a brand new greenhouse that was built by Byron Tenkink. This is his farm. Yes. Now you'll notice and here we are a lot greener. We are a lot greener in here than we are outside. And the simple reason for that is it is much warmer in here. It is way less windy in here. We have drip irrigation allowing uh, a gentle, ideal moisture condition. We have basically a perfect setup where we can grow all the plants we want to in spring, summer, and fall. We can't really grow in winter though, because as nice as this place is, uh, it's not gonna be able to withstand a Saskatchewan winter. For that, we are gonna have to get even more closed in, even more insulated. Basically, in order to grow through a Saskatchewan winter, you are gonna have to set up the conditions where you could basically, you, you're gonna have to treat it like growing, growing on Mars. Okay, so what do you have growing? I can see uh, yes. bags over there. The main thing that we're trying to get started here is tomatoes. So these are our beautiful little tomatoes. These ones here are vining tomatoes, and in the bags, we have bush variety tomatoes. These are the uh, vining tomatoes are gonna need string line to be able to grow and help them grow nice and tall. The bush variety ones, they can stand up on their own. So once they get old enough, we're gonna be able to pick those up, move them out of the greenhouse, and put them really anywhere we need to to make more space in here. Okay. And then we also have bell peppers over here. These guys will hopefully give us some nice bell peppers in a couple months or so. And then we also have some cucumbers. Now these cucumbers, they're planted here because they're also going to have to get staked and uh, raised up. And then this is the last, this one isn't really for production, but this is just because I really like it. This is a lemon tree. Ooh. Yeah. Okay, so I noticed that the temperature in here is very much warmer yes, in than fact, what it was outside. Was so. Like yeah. What? Take a picture oh, of the, the right there. there. Okay, so let me try not to trip on your beds here. So here's the thermometer. So even though it is 20 degrees and uh, very windy out there, a thin sheet of glass between us and the greenhouse allows it to be 32 in here and no wind, uh, basically the perfect conditions that we need for these plants to grow very quickly. And uh, that's a good thing because we have a compressed growing season. We are going to have to grow as much as we can while we can. And while the fields are, I mean, we already saw the fields out there. It's, they're pretty brown. There's not much green out there except weeds. So in here, here is where we're able to get our head start. Okay, so the compressed growing season is because we're so far north. Yes, okay. because of our latitude, because of the harsh winters. I mean, that said, if we were closer to the ocean, we would have a little more uh, uh, temperature regulation, mm -hmm. but we're really, we're kind of in a double whammy in Saskatchewan where we are very far north to grow, but we're also very far away from a large body of water. If we had a lot of water, that would help regulate the temperature. And in fact, we do try and bring water to the greenhouse, these right here, are just barrels full of water. We don't use this for irrigation. We only use this these barrels of water to soak up heat when it's warm. Okay. And we use that heat to help guard against frost. So that uh, if we do get a frosty night, these barrels will radiate enough heat to keep this place frost free. So it's like energy storage. Yes. Perfect. What we're doing here is trying, wow. We're basically creating a heat battery. This is a battery of heat that we're hoping to use when it gets colder. And the right, and then when the temperature gets colder, it releases some of that heat and it keeps the temperature in here a lot more even. Absolutely. In fact, touching on that, another uh, example of how we're using uh, heat and storing it in here, you'll notice that there is no ventilation in the greenhouse. Normally, uh, hoop houses, greenhouses will have a big fan on yeah. the end and uh, when it gets too hot, they'll just vent the air outside. But we don't really want to do that because heat is very precious to us. And so what we're doing is, see that blue tower right there? Yeah. With all the holes on top? That is an empty 
pipe basically going down into the ground, and then we are using so three feet down, we've dug trenches down through underneath these grow beds in the greenhouse, and we've put this perforated weeping tile down there. So the air gets pulled in from up there, uh -huh. where it's really hot and really humid. It gets pulled down into the ground. It runs through the ground, where the ground cools it. And the ground also condenses the moisture out of the air. The condensation forms on the inside of the perforated tile, and it drains down into the ground. So not only are we running a cooler, we're also running a dehumidifier at the same time. And that's, we'll now uh, see what's making all the noise over here. So these pipes all converge right here at the fan. So if we, if we turn the fans off, come here, I'll show you something. If we take this fan away, go ahead and have a look down in the barrel. Okay. See those tiles? So that's three feet down. Those are air pipes okay. from wow. the far end of the greenhouse all the way down here. So we use the fan here. Okay, so the pipes go from there mm -hmm. and they'll go straight they go underground, across all the way over there. All the okay. way to that blue tower. Yeah. So in the summer, when it's nice and warm and the ground is cool, we use the cool ground to cool the greenhouse down while pumping the air, the, hot, the heat, down into the ground. Later in the fall, we'll use that same warm ground to help warm the air to try and push our growing season further and further into fall. Uh, if everything goes according to plan, we should be able to keep growing in here all the way till Halloween without having to burn any propane, any fossil fuels, without having to run any electric heat we're basically using the heat of the summer, storing it away so we can use it in fall. Wow. Now, I noticed that um, the clear-ish panels that you have here are not glass. Yes. So what was your process in making the decision, like, what to use? Yes. Well, originally I had used um, just clear plastic, and the problem there is we get a lot of wind out yes. here. Like, it's a pretty windy day today. <laughs> And, you know, everything that's not nailed down is just flying all over the place. So we did originally have a hoop house, and the wind basically put it into our neighbor's yard. Okay. And uh, we also got a lot of hail, punched it full of holes. So mm. this is called polycarbonate, and it's two, it's uh, very similar to cardboard. You've got two walls mm -hmm. with uh, sort of a corrugated barrier in between. So it's called twin wall polycarbonate. It is basically hard plastic, so it's hail proof. It's got mm -hmm. a UV protected layer, so it's not going to break down in the uh, sunlight over time. Okay. It's warranted for about 20 years. And crucially, if, as you hear the wind going, you can hear it kind of creaking and moving, but it's holding solid. Yes, it is. Thing. And it is very, very windy today. So Yeah, so today is actually kind of a stress test for the building to make sure that it's all holding down. But uh, ultimately, that's kind of what, uh, what we need it for. We need it to allow the light in, we need it to keep the heat in, and we also need it to not blow away when it gets really stormy and windy out there. Now, did you build this greenhouse yourself? I did indeed. Wow. It is not the most So how square. long? It is 48 feet long uh -huh. and 20 feet wide. 48 and and 20 feet. 16 of those feet can be used to grow in. Actually, this is a really good uh, chance to see it. Um, we only have half of the building in glass. So from standing yeah, I here, that. here is all OSB. It looks more or less like a shed on the north side. Mm -hmm. And then over here, it's all glass on the south side. Yeah, in now, fact, you even have insulation yes. over here on now, the, the north side. The insulation is gonna be finished up further in the fall in order to keep our heat in. Okay. But that really, this design is tailor-made for our climate. In Saskatchewan, we have more light than we need. The original hoop houses were developed in Holland, in New York, 
in places that were close to the ocean that didn't have a lot of change in temperature, but they did have lots of cloudy, rainy days and not enough sunlight. So okay. those hoop houses were designed to maximize sunlight. We have the opposite problem. We have so much sunlight, we will never need, we'll, we'll, we'll never have to maximize sunlight. We've already got more than we need. Right. What we have an issue with is heat. The heat that we do have tends to blow away really quickly. It uh, will be really hot in, during the daytime, then really cold at nighttime. Yes. So by building it like this, we get lots of insulation. And when the sun shines like it is now, see where the shadow falls right in the walkway. Oh. So because we're so far north, the sun is at an angle for spring and fall. So the sun gets to shine in at an angle and we soak up all that sunlight. Eventually, when we get into June, July, as summer starts getting really oppressive and really hot, the sun is gonna go here. And so this area here will start shading out and we'll get less sunlight directly here. Uh, last year when we had a hoop house, just a normal all plastic thing, mm -hmm. as soon as the sun came out, the whole place went right up to like 45 degrees and you couldn't grow anything in there. Okay. But with this, by limiting how much sunlight we get, all we need is basically a big skylight and one big south window. And that's enough, more than enough light to do this whole section here. Wow. Now I also noticed that uh, the ground here is really sandy. So yes. in this part of, well, just outside of Prince Albert, um, you have yeah. really sandy soil. So yeah. what, what are you using in your planters? Well, the nice thing about having sandy soil is we never have to worry about drainage. So what I was talking about before with the, uh, the humidity getting condensed inside those, uh, those pipes, being able to drain out, mm -hmm. we are... Uh, not having to worry about flooding or uh, backlogging or anything like that, all of the water goes straight down. One of the issues there is that, like, on the one hand, the water goes straight down. That's good. On the other hand, if we're trying to water, the water goes straight down. <laughs> That's bad. Right. So we have everything on drip lines, and uh, we have to run the drip lines once a day. If you add heavy clay soil, you'd probably get away with only having to water once a week but we have to water once a day because our, our soil is so sandy. The other thing we have to use is, into our potting soil, we mix sawdust. And that sawdust works as a moisture sponge oh. to soak up the uh, excess moisture and mm -hmm. help to hold on to it, while also giving us that light, fluffy aeration because the roots also need oxygen. Okay, and a drip line is essentially a, a hose with holes poked into it so yes that you these can turn are the water on and yep it's a specialty hose hooked up to our pump and uh, once a day it turns on for an hour and there are tiny little holes at every 12 inches and these holes will drip out water enough for each plant to get exactly what they need wow we can also uh, dissolve fertilizer into the water so that when we water out we're also adding fertilizer at the same time. So that helps to kill two birds with one stone. Uh, now, just helps. as a little aside, when you talk about pump, that's because you have your own water source here. You're not yes. hooked up to we city have, water. Yeah, we have a sand point out there. Thankfully, we have groundwater only about 12 feet down. So all we have to do is dig down 12 feet, put a well, hook that up to a pump, and that pump gives us all the water that we need. That is uh, one of our greatest blessings uh, out here, is that uh, as long as we have abundant water and uh, nice sandy soil, uh, we are gonna be able to not have to worry about uh, not having enough water. For most of Saskatchewan, that's a real problem. Most of Saskatchewan farmland is uh, dry land farming. Uh, we are lucky enough to have a good water supply. And we that use that great. as much as we can. Okay.